So, you want to make a Star Wars hologram effect in the free version of DaVinci Resolve? Well, I got you covered. Also, just so you know, I made this effect live on stream a few days ago. Had a lot of fun doing that. I'm hoping to stream again sometime soon, so if that's something you don't want to miss, maybe subscribe. Alright, so here in Fusion, I've got my Star Wars background, and I'm going to bring down some green screen footage, obviously of a very powerful Jedi, or Sith, you know, it could be either one. So, I'm going to key this out using the Delta Keyer. Just going to drag the eyedropper here, key that out. Getting a little bit of a halo with this, so I'm just going to bring up Threshold until that disappears. So despite being in a very futuristic setting, the Star Wars holograms look very grungy and glitchy. So let's replicate that. I'm going to hit Shift Space to bring up the Select Tool menu, and search for a Displace node. So then, I'm going to displace this image with a Fast Noise. Drag that into the Displace. I'm going to hit the Dual Viewer button here. I don't need the media pool. I'll bring the Fast Noise into my left viewer. So in our Fast Noise, I'm going to uncheck Lock X and Y. Then just bring the X scale all the way. I want these horizontal lines throughout the thing. That's where it's going to be glitching. So I'm going to bring up the Y scale all the way. And I think I'm actually going to bring it to something bigger, like 40. Then I can bring up the detail, contrast, and the brightness. Now to have a little bit more control over what's going on, I'm going to go to the color tab and change the type to gradient. Now I can bring in these points here to make it just a little bit more contrasty and sharp. Now in the displace, I can change the type to X and Y, and just bring up the X refraction a little bit. You can see it's moving it slightly to the left or right, depending on which way I move, based on this white or black map. Now if I hit play, it's not animated at all. So in the fast noise, in the noise controls, I can bring up the seethe rate all the way. Now it's moving kind of glitchy. I think I want it to be a bit stronger though, so I'm going to change that one into a 10. Now it should be pretty glitchy and chaotic. Now one thing we can do, right now it's kind of chopping it up and moving it along. If I want it to look a little bit more warpy, I can bring up the spread a little bit. Now instead of like cutting it off here, it's kind of um, warping between them. That looks pretty nice. Now it's a little bit heavy on the glitch, so I think I'm going to bring the brightness down to maybe negative two, just so that it's a little bit more sparse. Yeah, I think I like that. Now, I'm going to hit shift space again and search for the scan lines node. Bring that to the screen. I'm going to bring up the line frequency, and that adds these lines between it. It's looking nice. Now to top off this giving it a grungy look, I'm going to search for a grain node. And I think the default settings look pretty good for this. But obviously you can play around with all these settings for your shot. Now let's add the projector beam coming out of it. So, making sure nothing is selected, I'm going to search for a directional blur. I'm going to drag our grain into that, bring that to the screen. I'm going to change the type to radial, then I can bring down the length all the way. Now if I move this around, you can see it's giving these kind of light rays effect, but it's not quite reaching our point, so I can change the length to negative 0.3. Now they go to the point we want. Then, what I can do using the beauty of nodes, instead of having to duplicate this and add it on top of our um, footage, what I can do is just take the grain, merge that on top of our directional blur, and I'll change the apply mode to screen. I'm gonna bring down our media in and media out just so I have a bit more space to work with. After our merge, I'm gonna search for a color corrector and bring it to a nice blue color. Then I'm going to add a soft glow. Now I think I'm gonna bring up the glow size so it's more diffused, bring down the gain so it's not quite as strong, and then bring up the threshold so that it's only gonna be glowing from the brighter parts of the image. And this is just a personal thing, but I think I like to bring up the blue a little bit. Now I can take this, merge it over our median one, and change the apply mode to screen. Now what we can do in our directional blur is bring this down to where you want the hologram to be coming from. So like if it's coming from below, you could bring it down here. I think maybe I'll have it coming from one of these panels on the wall here. Now we have our very own hologram effect. And again, very easily we can replace this with something else like a logo. So I'm going to bring down a logo, I'm going to merge this over a background just because our logo is in a square resolution, but I want this to match our composition. In the background, I'll bring down the alpha all the way, maybe scale it down a little bit. Then I can just put that into our displace instead of our keyed footage. And now we have a hologram of the DaVinci Resolve logo. If you want to add a bit more life to graphics like this, I can search for a DVE node. This node basically acts like a fake 3D, so it gives us different axes that we can move things on to give it a 3D effect. So I'm going to start with the Y rotation over here, go to the end of our composition, and just drag it 
over here. So now our logo is rotating throughout the whole thing, just give it more of a 3D look. Now if you're still itching for more Star Wars effects, then you can check out this video right here, where I go in depth on all the ins and outs in making lasers in DaVinci Resolve.